Now the men and their wives raised a great outcry against their fellow Jews. Some were saying, We and our sons and daughters are numerous. In order for us to eat and stay alive, we must get grain. Others were saying, We are mortgaging our fields, our vineyards, and our homes to get grain during the famine. Still others were saying, We have had to borrow money to pay the king's tax on our fields and vineyards, although we are of the same flesh and blood as the rest of our people, and though our children are as good as theirs, yet we have to subject our sons and daughters to slavery. Some of our daughters have already been enslaved, but we are powerless because our fields and our vineyards belong to others. When I heard their outcry and these charges, I was very angry. I pondered them in my mind and then accused the nobles and officials. I told them, you are charging your own people interest. So I called together a large meeting to deal with them and said, as far as possible, we have bought back our fellow Jews who were sold to the Gentiles. Now you are selling your own people only for them to be sold back to us? They kept quiet because they could find nothing to say. So I continued, What you are doing is not right. Shouldn't you walk in the fear of our God to avoid the reproach of our Gentile enemies? I and my brothers and my men are also lending the people money and grain. But let us stop charging interest. Give back to them immediately their fields, vineyards, olive groves, and houses, and also the interest you are charging them. One percent of the money, grain, new wine, and olive oil. We will give it back, they said, and we will not demand anything more from them. We will do as you say. Then I summoned the priests and made the nobles and officials take an oath to do what they had promised. I also shook out the folds of my robe and said, In this way may God shake out of their houses and possessions anyone who does not keep this promise. So may such a person be shaken out and empty. At this the whole assembly said, Amen, and praised the Lord. And the people did as they had promised. Moreover, from the twentieth year of King Artaxerxes, when I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, until his thirty-second year, twelve years, neither I nor my brothers ate the food allotted to the governor. But the earlier governors, those preceding me, placed a heavy burden on the people and took forty shekels of silver from them in addition to food and wine. Their assistants also lorded it over the people. But out of reverence for God, I did not act like that. Instead, I devoted myself to the work on this wall. All my men were assembled there for the work. We did not acquire any land. Furthermore, a hundred and fifty Jews and officials ate at my table, as well as those who came to us from the surrounding nations. Each day, one ox, six choice sheep, and some poultry were prepared for me and every ten days an abundant supply of wine of all kinds. In spite of all this, I never demanded the food allotted to the governor, because the demands were heavy on these people. Remember me with favor, my God, for all I have done for these people. When word came to Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem the Arab, and the rest of our enemies that I had rebuilt the wall and not a gap was left in it, though up to that time I had not set the doors in the gates. Sanballat and Geshem sent me this message. Come, let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. But they were scheming to harm me. So I sent messengers to them with this reply. I am carrying on a great project and cannot go down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and go down to you? Four times they sent me the same message and each time I gave them the same answer. Then, the fifth time, Sanballat sent his aide to me with the same message, and in his hand was an unsealed letter in which was written, It is reported among the nations, and Geshem says it is true that you and the Jews are plotting to revolt, and therefore you are building the wall. Moreover, according to these reports, you are about to become their king and have even appointed prophets to make this proclamation about you in Jerusalem. There is a king in Judah. Now this report will get back to the king. So come, let us meet together. 
I sent him this reply. Nothing like what you are saying is happening. You are just making it up out of your head. They were all trying to frighten us, thinking their hands will get too weak for the work, and it will not be completed. But I prayed. Now, strengthen my hands. One day, I went to the house of Shemaiah, son of Delaya, the son of Mehetabel, who was shut in at his home. He said, Let us meet in the house of God inside the temple, and let us close the temple doors, because some people are coming to kill you. By night they are coming to kill you. But I said, Should someone like me run away? Or should one like me go into the temple to save his life? I will not go. I realized that God had not sent him, but that he had prophesied against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. He had been hired to intimidate me so that I would commit a sin by doing this, and then they would give me a bad name to discredit me. Remember Tobiah and Sanballat, my God, because of what they have done. Remember also the prophet Noadiah and how she and the rest of the prophets have been trying to intimidate me. So the wall was completed on the 25th of Elor in 52 days. When all our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. Also, in those days, the nobles of Judah were sending many letters to Tobiah, and replies from Tobiah kept coming to them. For many in Judah were under oath to him, since he was son-in-law to Shechaniah, son of Era, and his son Jehohanan had married the daughter of Meshulam, son of Berechiah. Moreover, they kept reporting to me his good deeds and then telling him what I said. And Tobiah sent letters to intimidate me. After the wall had been rebuilt and I had set the doors in place, the gatekeepers, the musicians, and the Levites were appointed. I put in charge of Jerusalem my brother Hanani, along with Hananiah, the commander of the citadel, because he was trustworthy and feared God more than most people do. I said to them, The gates of Jerusalem are not to be opened until the sun is hot. While the gatekeepers are still on duty, have them shut the doors and bar them. Also, appoint residents of Jerusalem as guards, some at their posts and some near their own houses. Now the city was large and spacious, but there were few people in it, and the houses had not yet been rebuilt. So my God put it into my heart to assemble the nobles, the officials, and the common people for registration by families. I found the genealogical record of those who had been the first to return. This is what I found written there. These are the people of the province who came up from the captivity of the exiles, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had taken captive. They returned to Jerusalem and Judah, each to his own town, in company with Zerubbabel, Joshua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Rehemiah, Nehomenai, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mispirith, Bigvai, Nehem, and Baana. The list of the men of Israel, the descendants of Parash, 2,172, of Sephatiah, 372, of Era, 652, of Pehath Moab, through the line of Jeshua and Joab, 2,818, of Elam, 1,254, of Zatu, 845, of Zakai, 760, of Binuai, 648, of Bebai, 628, of Asgad, 2,322, of Adonikam, 667, of Bigvai, 2,067, of Aden, 655. Of Ater, through Hezekiah, 98. Of Hashem, 328. Of Bezai, 324. Of Herod, 
112. Of Gibeon, 95. The men of Bethlehem and Netopha, 188. Of Anathoth, 120. Of Beth Asmaveth, 42. Of Kiriath, Jearim, Kephira, and Berah, 743. Of Ramah and Geba, 621. Of Michmash, 122. Of Bethel and Ai, 123. Of the other Nebo, 52. Of the other Elam, 1,254. Of Haran, 320. Of Jericho, 345. Of Lod, Hadid, and Ono, 721. Of Senea, 3,930. The priests, the descendants of Judea through the family of Jeshua, 973. Of Imur, 1,052. Of Pashur, 1,247. Of Haram, 1,017. The Levites, the descendants of Jeshua through Cadmiel, through the line of Hadoviah, 74. The musicians, the descendants of Asa, 148. The gatekeepers, the descendants of Shalom, Ater, Talmud, Akab, Hatita, and Shobai, 138. The temple servants, the descendants of Zaya, Hesufa, Tabeoth, Kiros, Saya, Hayden, Lebena, Hagabah, Shalmai, Hanan, Giddel, Gehar, Riea, Reason, Nekoda, Gazam, Azza, Pusia, Besai, Miyunam, Nefusam, Bakbak, Hakufa, Harhar, Basluth, Mahida, Harsha, Barkos, Sisera, Tima, Neziah, and Hatipha, the descendants of the servants of Solomon, the descendants of Sotai, Sophereth, Parida, Jaila, Darkon, Giddel, Shephatiah, Hattel, Pokerith Hazabaim, and Ammon, the temple servants and the descendants of the servants of Solomon, 392. The following came up from the towns of Telmila, Telharsha, Kirab, Adam, and Immel, but they could not show that their families were descended from Israel. The descendants of Delaya, Tobiah, and Nekoda, 642. And from among the priests, the descendants of Hobeya, Hakas, and Barzillai, a man who had married a daughter of Barzillai, the Gileadite, and was called by that name. These searched for their family records, but they could not find them, and so were excluded from the priesthood as unclean. The governor, therefore, ordered them not to eat any of the most sacred food until there should be a priest ministering with the Urim and Thummim. The whole company numbered 42,360, besides their 7,337 male and female slaves, and they also had 245 male and female singers. There were 736 horses, 245 mules, 435 camels, and 6,720 donkeys. Some of the heads of the families contributed to the work. The governor gave to the treasury 1,000 derricks of gold, 50 bowls, and 530 garments for priests. Some of the heads of the families gave to the treasury for the work 20,000 derricks of gold and 2,200 minas of silver. The total given by the rest of the people was 20,000 derricks of gold, 2,000 minas of silver, and 67 garments for priests. The priests the Levites, the gatekeepers, the musicians, and the temple servants, along with certain of the people and the rest of the Israelites, settled in their own towns. When the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their towns, 